In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, talking about the tropics, the overall storminess happening around the nation, which will also be above average, and discussing the upcoming temperature pattern. It is incredibly beautiful out still as of Tuesday, August 5th. We've dealt with a cooldown that has lasted days and just felt phenomenal for most folks. I've gotten so many comments of people just loving the temperatures we've had. And we still have huge question marks as to what kind of temperature pattern we're really going to be stuck in once we're approaching and going kind of beyond the halfway point of the month. So we're going to be trying to investigate that a little bit today. But let's start out by talking about the tropics. So let's go ahead and zoom in to the eastern Pacific where we do have tropical storm uh, Henriette, I'm going to try to just pronounce it. I think that's how you have to say that, right? Let me know if there's a different way of pronouncing that, but they come up with very complicated names. We do have another area off to the east with a 70% chance of development over the next two days. And afterwards for the days three through seven, it jumps up to a 90% chance. So this one is very, very likely going to develop as well into a tropical, uh, system out there in the Eastern Pacific. As we just kind of glance over here at the Atlantic, a couple things going on. We have Tropical Storm Dexter out there. We also have this area closer to the southeast, which has bumped up to a medium chance of development. We have a 10% chance that this develops over the next two days, but a 40% chance over the next seven. So this one is just under the chance of a coin flip for developing. Uh, and this one would have the chance to perhaps uh, head eastward straight into these areas, kind of move northward into these areas or out to sea. Uh, regardless, as of now, most model guidance has been for a weaker tropical system, just like we talked about yesterday. So we're thinking more in line of a tropical depression, tropical storm, probably not even category one hurricane. Although I always say nothing's impossible in weather, so I don't want to rule out anything, but that is my current thinking is kind of like a low end tropical system. But it is definitely worth noting that although winds are directly associated with the intensity of a tropical system, the rainfall is not. And a lot of times we have seen devastating rainfall from these weaker tropical systems, especially slower moving ones. So we're going to need to monitor this very closely because even though it's not a major tropical system, you can see major impacts. The, the impacts and then the intensity of the low don't always correlate perfectly so we're going to be monitoring this very closely and i'll play the model run out here we see this is as of tomorrow at about 8 a.m is as we head into the afternoon this is the seventh afternoon we start to see more activity get going and really what we're left with by 5 p.m on the 9th of august is a wider range of showers thunderstorms happening as far westward as south carolina and north carolina here and as far eastward as uh, just to the north of Bermuda there. Let's keep going though and moving this along and we really don't see this one develop on this particular model run. So we're going to rewind this and watch our system further off to the east. The more concerning one overall for a major tropical system is this area where over the next two days we have a 0% chance of development but a 50% chance of development over the next seven days. So quite literally the chance of a coin flip is what we're currently thinking. And this all kind of originates from this area of storminess between South America and Africa there. Uh, and we're watching for something to start to spin up and generally move into the area that is very favorable here. And from there, there's huge question marks. We'll discuss that in a minute. But let's watch it play out a little bit. We see that intensification and that kind of pocket kind of just spin off of it. And as we're moving through, this is by the 10th. So this is a long range threat. This is five days from now. We see it right here, probably at most on this model run, what we're looking at here. So this isn't my thoughts on what's going to happen. This is just what we're seeing on screen on the GFS model. Probably a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. And this model, this time around, we've seen wide varieties of solutions on the GFS model, but it kind of takes it on the southern end and actually out of the cone, uh, somewhere north of Puerto Rico and kind of the Eastern Caribbean here. And it looks like it's gonna go north of Dominican Republic as well. So let's keep tracking this thing as we go along on this model run. And it starts to really intensify once it's north of Dominican Republic and north of Haiti and moving towards the Bahamas. 
and it becomes a rather intense system over the Bahamas, just to the north of Cuba here on this model run. And as we just keep going, it moves roughly northward from there along the east coast of Florida, but offshore enough to where it keeps intensifying. It's clearly a hurricane here by this point on this model run. Somewhere off offshore of Cape Canaveral or Palm Bay there in Florida. Probably looking at a Category 2 or 3 hurricane, considering we have a full eye happening there on this model run. It is tough to say when you're just looking at simulated radar, but that's probably what we're seeing. And that does strike actually rather close to like the Daytona, Palm Coast area around the 16th on this model run. But that's a full 11 days from now, so that is very far out. And time will tell, it does move roughly northwestward up towards the Jacksonville area and then somewhere into southern Georgia uh, there. Uh, as time goes on, it causes rainfall for days over the uh, areas in the southeast. And it's also worth noting, quietly off to the east in the long range on this model run, we started to get some showers getting going here. Uh, actually within the cone, this is the 12th. So a uh, kind of spinoff of other showers happens, and this is by the 16th. We start to see this really come together right near Bermuda, and then it moves roughly west from there, and then eventually kind of does a loop. So it hits Bermuda rather directly and then kind of loops back around. But this one also looks like a uh, pretty intense tropical system, at least a tropical storm on this model run. So, yeah, more signs that the Atlantic is just going to be really, really active. and um, it's just crazy, this light switch that has been flicked on in the Atlantic. I mean, just a few days ago, we had no threats in the Atlantic, and we had to kind of just talk about what the models were showing. But all of a sudden, we have one active system, two systems that have about a 50-50 chance of development, and then more beyond it. So we are suddenly moving into uh, a very active period of this hurricane season. Let's go ahead and take a look at the European model and see what that one has to say. Now, as we take a look at this, we're going to just keep going towards tomorrow. This is for Wednesday on the 6th tomorrow. We do see a lot of activity around for the southeast, onshore of the southeast, from Florida all the way up through Virginia and everywhere in between. And then we see this pocket of offshore energy. This is the area that we're watching for something to potentially come together. I'm going to take this straight towards Thursday, where we do see some pressure lowering here. Again, Thunderstorms and showers along that southeast coast from Virginia down through the Carolinas and even into Georgia, Florida, and along the deep south as well. Just plenty of precipitation to go over here. As we keep going, we do see this tropical system starts to get going. Maybe a tropical depression at most, uh, but it is well offshore, which is much different than what we were seeing from the models yesterday. And it just kind of innocently moves away. Uh, and as we keep going, uh, we start to see periods of activity around the 10th and 11th here. We see a lot of the plains, Midwest, Great Lakes dealing with thunderstorms, mostly due to these stronger lows up here in Canada. We have a 995 there just to the south of the Hudson Bay, and this one looks to bring a cold front with it. So let's look at the afternoon of Monday there, uh, and then we'll move on towards the Tuesday afternoon time frame, and we get a secondary low set up right between the Great Lakes and the Hudson Bay. Uh, a pretty intense cold front here, so this would bring about uh, a fair share of thunderstorm chances there throughout the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley. We do have a lot of Gulf and Southeast energy kind of getting infused into uh, these eastern areas as well, so that's why we're left with just many areas in the east dealing with storms. It's also worth noting that we have a positive PNA set up still by this point, which just means warmer temperatures over the west. We have this low between the Hudson Bay and Great Lakes. And last year, a lot of our cooldowns were able to be really easily indicated by these lows moving through this area. We have this cold front. And when we look at the jet stream, it's ridging over the west. And it looks like a trough is trying to move back down into the eastern states. As we move towards the 13th, 14th, this is the 14th. We clearly have a trough in the east when you take a look at this. Uh, so cooler air making a comeback on this European model is the theme. Something we're just going to have to watch very closely. As this uh, jet stream kind of pushes that wind southward, we actually do have a lot of thunderstorm activity around for the plains and Midwest still. And it's worth noting that we have plenty of precipitation out there off the southeast and in the Gulf. And we could see some close to home tropical systems try to develop similar to the threat that we have there currently. 
I want to keep going because we do get more cold front type systems moving through. Something dragging like this is what we're seeing. Thunderstorms developing along that boundary uh, is kind of the theme that we're seeing here. We do get a pretty major tropical system that moves into Central America down here. If you can see it at the bottom of your screen, uh, it's near the Yucatan Peninsula. And that did look like a rather intense one. So both of these models, the GFS and the European model, continuing to show plenty of threats in the tropical department, unfortunately. Total precipitation is pretty split. We have this area here in a lot of Canada, Northern Plains and Upper Midwest, as well as the Great Lakes here. Then we have the Southeast area as well. Both of these regions dealing with above average precipitation, and it's rather dry in between these two areas. So when we look at the anomalies, take a look at this. Pretty well above average for the Southeast and well above average for sure for these Northern Plains, Upper Midwest and Great Lakes locations, but we can see a lot of brown in between starting with a lot of the plains and Rockies, moving into the deep south and Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, northeast. All of these areas look rather dry, actually, on this particular model run. Let's take a look at the temperature pattern, and we're actually going to switch to the European model. I'm more curious about what that one has to say than the European ensemble, because we get this cooler air. Eventually, we warm back up for a brief minute there around the 12th, uh, 13th, but we do get this cooler signal it's trying desperately to move in, but it kind of gets rejected on this particular model run. Uh, and then we're left with a warmer pattern overall after the 15th, so between the 15th and 20th. But the fact that these models are starting to show maybe a second cold front with a new wave of cold air moving in, it is definitely interesting. Uh, I still think that there's huge question marks, again, mostly for any time after like the 12th, 13th. We're going to be watching it closely daily with you guys and kind of going over it and we will get to the bottom of it as we get closer. With all of these things being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.